Okay, here's our second video. This time I'm using the mic from this USB headset. Um, again, I'm using the laptop to record and external webcam because I didn't mention this in the last video. The webcam built into my laptop is kind of terrible. Okay, so again, let me know how the quality is. This time what we're going to talk about is how to set up a natural deduction proof formally. So I have given you a sort of quasi-informal English language version of a natural deduction proof or derivation. Those are two words that mean the same thing. The, this thing of chaining together many little steps we'll call a proof, call a derivation, whatever you want. So here's basically how we set things up, just formally how it looks. You're used to seeing a variety of different ways that we can show uh, an argument to say that these sentences are the premises and that one's the conclusion, right? Sometimes I'll call some of them P1, P2, etc., and then call the conclusion C. You've seen cases where we draw a horizontal line under the premises. That's fine. You've seen cases where we use those three dots, a therefore sign. Here's a new kind of thing. So when we do a natural deduction proof, we use a vertical line like this to track something I'll tell you about in a second. And we use just a little small horizontal notch to say the stuff above this is a premise or an assumption. So if I'm doing a natural deduction proof to show that that argument we started with is valid, we're going to have something that winds up looking like this. When you first set up a problem, when I just tell you, give me a natural deduction proof to show that this argument is valid. The first thing you're going to do is write the premises up at the top of your page, the conclusion down at the bottom, a vertical line going all the way, little horizontal line under the premises, with a bunch of white space in between, because we're going to fill this in with the intermediate steps that we take. We're going to say, here's how we get from there down to there. Now, every line that comes along here is going to be something that we get by applying one of those dozen or so rules I told you about last time. So each time we write down a new conclusion that we can get from this stuff that came before, I'll write off to the side, to the right of it, I will say, here's the name of the rule I'm using. And here are the previous sentences I'm looking at that I'm applying the rule to. So in the end, we're going to wind up with a list of a bunch of, in fact, numbered sentences, starting with the premises and then continuing on, where every line, with an exception I'll tell you about, Every line has not just the sentence that we get, but also off to the right of it, the name of the rule that got it for us. Okay. Let me give you another little bit of technology. I'm getting to the exception that I just mentioned I would have to uh, the general rule that says you're always going to have the name of a rule beside anything you write down. I used the word rule in two sen uh, twice in that sentence and they meant different things. That's a bad sentence. Sorry. Okay, remember before when we did the, when I gave you that argument showing that our original uh, thing about Alfred was valid, I split into two cases. I said either he studied or he didn't. And I temporarily assumed that he studied. And then I used premise one to show that he got good grades. Then I stopped assuming that anymore. And I temporarily assumed that he didn't study and used that to show that he still got good grades. We have a way of tracking temporary assumptions in natural deduction proofs. They're called subproofs or subderivations. This is the sort of thing that these vertical lines keep track of. I said lines plural. There's only been one so far. If in my derivation, my proof, I want to temporarily assume something like say S, I'll write another vertical line. This is just like a proof within a proof, a derivation within a derivation. So I'll have a vertical line with a little horizontal notch to say the thing above this is what I'm temporarily assuming. So I might write, I want to temporarily assume S. How long am I assuming it? I'm assuming it as long as this extra vertical line lasts. Down here, I'm not assuming S anymore. Anything on here, I am assuming S. So our natural deduction proof for that original argument might look like this. I assumed S, and I show that G is true in that case. Then after that, I assume temporarily again something. I assume not S. Some stuff happens, and I get down to G. OK, what does it look like when you have a rule, what we call a citation, 
off to the side of one of our lines? Well, I said before, how do I know that G is true in this case? Well, I've assumed S, and I have a sentence that says S arrow G. Now, if you look in your textbook, and I'll get in another video to um, where you're looking and how to read that part, you'll see that there's a rule for exactly this kind of thing. There's something that says, if you have some sentence of the form A arrow B, and you have a sentence of the form A, that is matching the antecedent of the arrow sentence that you had, then you can get B by this rule, which is called arrow elimination. So beside this G here, I'll say the rule I'm using is called arrow elimination, because that's the one I just told you about. And where do I see two sentences like the ones arrow elimination wants me to have? Well, I see an arrow sentence on line one. So I'll write one. And the rule says I need two sentences, not just one. The arrow sentence by itself isn't enough. I also need to have its antecedent. Where do I have the antecedent? That is S on line four. So I write one comma four. Okay. In the end, I want to make sure that every line all the way from one to whatever number we get to down here. I want to make sure that every line has beside it a rule citation like this with all the numbers it needs, or it occurs above a little horizontal line saying, I'm just assuming this, right? The little horizontal line says, I don't know that this thing is true. I'm assuming it to see what happens, right? These rule citations you can think of as answering the question, how do you know that? So assuming these things and assuming this, how do I know G? Well, it follows by arrow elimination from these two. How do you know G? That's how. But when you're making an assumption, there's no need to answer the question, how do you know that? If you ask me, how do you know Alfred studied? I'll say, I don't. I'm just assuming it to see what would be true in that case. How do I know Alfred didn't study down here? I don't. I'm just assuming it. So this is how you can tell when you're done. Every line, every single line needs to have either a horizontal little notch underneath saying this is just an assumption, or it needs to answer the question, how do you know? And the way we answer that is by naming a rule and naming the lines it applies to. That's what a natural deduction proof looks like.